Well, I think device specific is very important because I do think uh, the, uh, the the first data that we had was, of course, with the postal pumps. That that is the pneumatic heart mate and the electrical heart mate and the Novacore. So these pumps actually unload the ventricle completely. They were called left ventricular assist devices, but they should have been called left ventricular replacement devices because they actually replace the function of the left ventricle. When they're functioning normally, the aortic valve never opens. The, the, but the heart is beating, and the, but the heart is beating in dyssynchrony uh, with the pump. Uh, and I think that's another uh, consideration that we've never uh, uh, completely uh, uh, analyzed. That is, the heart uh, is beating, and with, but it's out of phase with the pump, and the, and and as such, there'll be periods of, of prolonged isometric contraction of the native heart. Now that might be good in the sense that it might sort of gives a certain amount of exercise to the heart, or it might be bad because uh, the uh, uh, isometric contraction of the ventricle is its point of highest uh, oxygen requirement, uh, as you know. Now, as we got into continuous flow pumps, the first pump I implanted was the Jarvik in uh, 2000, the first pump we had experience with. The Jarvik is inside the ventricle placed inside the ventricle, which is my, was my recommendation to Rob Jarvik when I first saw the pump. Uh, he initially was going to have it outside the ventricle, but since the inlet cannula is the sort of bete noire, the, the big uh, limitation in all these pumps, uh, he had a pump that you really didn't need an inlet cannula. Now, one of the problems, though, as, as it is in parallel with the native heart, the the best patients with the Jarvik pump are going to be those that the heart, once it's unloaded, will recover enough of its function that it can work in parallel with the with the pump. So the pump is ca carrying a certain part of the uh, uh, load, and the the heart is carrying a certain part. And uh, so if they if it if the heart is not able to contribute to the cardiac output we have a higher uh, mortality in the immediate post-implantation with the uh, Jarvik. Now, the HeartMate II uh, is, again, a pump we developed here uh, that was uh, a descendant of what we call the Hemo pump, which was the first uh, continuous flow pump uh, that I implanted in 1988, and it showed that you could have a a pump spinning at 25,000 RPM in the bloodstream without hemolytic hemolyzing the blood, and I think uh, the HeartMate II, uh, again, was made, developed by simply putting bearings on the, on the, uh, uh, the hemo pump and making it a little bigger. There were problems with its early development, however, and it had to be redesigned for reasons that we don't need to go into, but uh, the pump that I implanted in uh, the first one in November of 2003 was the first such pump to be uh, implanted. Now, one of the things I noticed, this pump, in contrast to the Jarvik, is in series with the heart. That is, it's, uh, it's outside the ventricle, so the blood goes through the ventricle and then into the pump. One of the virtues of that is that you can, the ventricle then acts as more or less a reservoir for the heart. And uh, it does, however, leave the heart dilated. So unless you actively intervene with the RPMs, uh, turning the RPMs up under an echo control, and unload the ventricle to the degree that allows it to uh, regain some of the function, because the ventricle has to be unloaded. If it's still dilated, it won't uh, show any signs of recovery.